Hello and welcome to the world of FIPME. It's Gamescom time and that means we will present you a ton of deep dives into all the biggest games for PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X, PC, all big platforms out there. We will talk to developers and uh, give you a couple really cool previews. And today we're starting with Gotham Knights, the new Batman game. It looks absolutely fantastic on PlayStation 5. We just got to check it out. And uh, here you can see Mr. Freeze that shock freezes Gotham and well bad, bad girl is basically here on the bad pod racing through Gotham and what makes this game so special is that well Batman is dead that's kinda crazy right um, we'll see how the whole story develops but basically in this game Batman is no more and a bad girl Robin, Nightwing and Deadpool must form an alliance to save the city and um, you know, take on Mr. Freeze and must take on an enemy that's really well known from the comics actually. It's the uh, Court of Owls. The Court of Owls is a secret society within Gossam. It's basically built out of the lights of Gossam. And they recruit, well, we can say passed away assassins to do their dirty work. So, this is going to be very interesting because it's a completely new enemy, someone we haven't uh, fought yet, at least not in the games. And what's also kind of interesting is that uh, what we heard from developers is that Gotham Knights is actually not part of the Arkham universe. So it's not a sequel to uh, Arkham Knight. Actually, the sequel to Arkham Knight, which is kind of crazy to me, to be honest, is Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League, which is also a game we will uh, show you during our Gamescom reports. But uh, yeah, Gotham Knight is a completely alternative universe. And uh, you can see here, you know, lightning bolts of ice hit the asphalt of Gotham. The street and even entire buildings freeze. Uh, Batgirl ignites the turbo here in the world premiere of Gotham Knights, who races through the streets on the bad pot, while Mr. Freeze has already buried the famous clock tower of Gotham City under a layer of ice. What's kind of cool here is uh, the icing can be used in a playful way, right? Like there's like a, like sort of like a thick sheet and almost like built sort of like an ice platform, like a, like a, like a sheet jump, right? where we can just jump over um, to to pass over a couple uh, crash police vehicles that block the path here. And you can also see uh, GCPD-1 in the air. Uh, obviously, the, the Gotham Police Department has dispatched the helicopters and their units to uh, fight with the freeze. Uh, and we get kind of like a warning here that GCPD-1 might actually open fire on us. So. We should be careful, but I mean, come on, we're bad girls, so <laughs> some uh, small police people will, will not be an issue for us. We're standing here on top of the state law building, um, you know, jumping, plunging down at the speed of a fighter jet, pretty much the way we used to, right? Like, this is what we do in all the Batman games. Um, but what we actually will see here in this first kind of like fighting sequence is that the free flow system has been altered quite a bit. Um, Gotham Knights feels way more like Assassin's Creed, I would say. It's a little bit more uh, like an RPG, right? Like, it's a lot about timing, it's a lot about skills, it's a lot about levels, which is kind of interesting. That's certainly a new one uh, for the series. Obviously, yes, uh, that's something we have to talk about. Uh, we, we just saw Marvel's Avengers, which obviously is kind of like a service game. I, I kind of hope that this doesn't go too much into this like, whole like service game kind of realm because I mean you know how it is right like with service games um, things can be a little bit on a, on a finicky way you have a lot of loot boxes but uh, there's something interesting actually we can talk about because what we do at FIPME is we build a stock exchange for in-game items right that means you want a certain item you want a certain suit for Batgirl, you want a cool suit for Deadpool, you want the, the brand new suit for Robin, a certain item in the game, you don't have to go for these like crazy weird loot boxes that you typically have to buy, you can just go on our, on our uh, stock exchange and acquire them there, um, we have done it pretty easily actually, you can just literally like uh, acquire an item and uh, then basically you meet up in the game, you pass it over, or the person that you bought it from you will pass it over to them. Uh, and that's that's how we will do it. Uh, we're definitely looking to support a lot of games, you know, like World of Warcraft, Cisco, obviously a ton of games. We will definitely look into supporting Gotham Knights. Well, obviously first we have to check out whether we can do it once the game comes out. That's kind of like a 
game to game kind of basis but yeah we really want to build something for you guys uh, where you have the opportunity to just acquire the item you want and kind of like the bad suit you want and not just go through this like weird system of loot box or whatever that has become so famous in our industry and has kind of like poisoned it a little bit but let's go back to Gossam Knights right uh, as you can see here, I mean, bad girl is quite kick-ass, right? Uh, with a strong kick out the air. We throw this guy here backwards. Um, he looks a bit, little bit like Bane, kind of like a maybe a smaller Bane kind of guy. Also has like a freeze gun, or a couple of these guys also have like normal assault rifles. So, um, yeah, I would say this, this feels like Batman. I mean, this feels really good. I think it has a good flow. Uh, we roll into crowd, flex our muscles, you know, roll out again. You can pick off individual opponents, sort of uh, go back to confrontation. Everything works as usual, I would say. The animations are very nice. Uh, the dynamics are right. The speed feels good. And um, yeah. And I think what's kind of new here is that Batgirl has brought her flooding friends with her, right? <laughs> like, uh, you can actually activate bats. Um, and uh, yeah, that will fly in. They will um, kind of like confuse the enemy, you can say, right? We don't really see here if they actually take damage away from the enemy. I don't know about that yet because we haven't played it yet, right? We just sort of analyzed the material we were sent over and uh, where, where we've seen. And um, But yeah, I, I think it's more about crowd control kind of thing, right? Like you have a lot of enemies here. You probably want to want to sort of like uh, focus a bit more on this, on especially one uh, sort of like the the mini boss or, or the, maybe the commander of this unit and uh, basically just confuse the others um, yeah obviously I mean you can see that <laughs> Batgirl has no issues with the scan fodder of enemies here but where's Mr. Freeze? Uh, a huge ice sheet leading up to the Elliot Center gives us a good idea where this might scientist might be uh, you probably I don't know if you've seen the movie uh, Batman Robin it's kind of like an older one. It's a pretty good one, actually. It's a bit more of a... It has a bit of a weird style. It's like very... You can say colorful. Like much more colorful than the recent Christopher Nolan movies. That's certainly something. Also, I think The Batman, which is uh, starring Robert Pattinson, the new one that was just uh, revealed during DC Fandom, has a very dark tone, so uh, the older Batmans were much more colorful. This one is actually staring uh, Judge Clooney as Batman, which is kind of interesting. Um, has a good dynamic, and you're fighting against uh, Dr. Freeze, who, <laughs> funnily enough, is uh, voiced by Arnold Schwarzenegger, um, who, ha who happens to be... Well, he's Austrian, and you can, you can definitely hear that in his accent. It's kind of funny. Um, if you don't know who Dr. Freeze is, uh, he is basically, he was a cryologist, right? He was a scientist and so basically an accident happens here and um, he has to wear a bodysuit now that keeps his temperature constantly below zero degrees Celsius. So uh, you can imagine that would probably also bring us crazy. So um, yeah, Mr. Freeze has gone mad again and um, he wants to freeze the entirety of Gotham. We don't know what yet what really happened. Right? We actually don't know if he killed their greatest protector. What we've seen here is that we see Bruce Wayne, aka Batman, uh, in a video message, and he basically says, If you see this, then I'm dead. This is code black. This message was automatically encrypted when it destroyed the Batcave. It won't take Gotham's criminal gangs long to find out I'm no longer here. And we can't rely on the GCPD. Not since he passed. And then it shows... And then pretty much shows the, the badge of Gordon and the flower. So we can assume that... Well, Gordon was probably killed. Maybe he was killed by Dr. Freeze. We don't know that for sure. Maybe he was killed by the uh, Court of Olds. Could be everything, right? What's certainly remarkable here is that... Every hero feels different, right? Uh, although we just saw Batgirl in action, here you can see a little bit of Robin. He fights with an energy whip, uh, which he uses to wrap around opponents and lift them off their feet. 
it's almost like a little bit like God of War, I feel like. That's a interesting, interesting style. Then you have Deadpool here, uh, shooting his two Desert Eagles, jumping around, doing a somersault, you know, like kind of Ryan Reynolds style. I don't think he will voice uh, him though, because this is kind of like an alternative universe. If you've seen the comics, Deadpool has met with Batman a couple times, so... But it's also interesting because they were more foes than friends, so they were not necessarily buddies. It's going to be very interesting how Warner Bros. Montreal, that is in, in charge here of Gotham Knights, will actually paint a story because we don't really know when Deadpool became a friend of Batman and of Batgirl. There are a lot of things that are kind of odd and kind of like very interesting to discover, I would say, because uh, if you have seen, if you have played the recent Batman games, we played Oracle, and Oracle had a confrontation as Batgirl with the Joker. Um, he brought her into a wheelchair, so basically she wasn't capable of fighting anymore. And that's that's the that's the reason why she basically became Oracle and more this person that was more like a almost like a, a little bit like Alfred, right? Like she sort of took a backseat, became more of like a technical supervisor, and gave Batman a lot of information passed through uh, analytics, was kind of like the hacker in the background, um, and now she really, yeah, takes over the front seat again and basically takes over the job of her of her boss. Uh, that's kind of interesting. So it's going to be very interesting how they play out the story. I'm very curious about that. There are a lot of things in this gameplay that are that are fascinating because they don't really match up with what we know so far. So I have no idea how they maybe they blend in everything, like they blend in the comics with the games and sort of create this alternative universe where also Justice League is like a huge part of. Like they sort of it feels like they are they they're blending the entire DC universe. Uh, I think that's also what DC wants to do. I mean, they obviously have seen. How massively successful the the Marvel uh, Cinematic Universe has become, right? Where where all the superheroes are just have blend in, and they create this like giant endgame, which was extremely successful with like over two billion at box office. They make crazy amounts of money. Obviously, DC also wants to do this now. Um, looks like looks like they'd also do this in the movies now uh, with the with the next edition of like the Suicide Squad two of the next. This whole DCU, like, they're kind of like, yeah, kind of like a, a DC alternative universe where everything blends together. Because we can actually activate as Robin the Justice League satellites to teleport to close range. This is something that we've never seen, I believe, in the games. That's certainly interesting. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure this is actually the reason that they are blending in everything kind of like dc universe that we will very likely see on screen in the big uh, in the cinema and uh, they probably also do it in the game so yeah it's going to be a next generation of dc universe so that's kind of cool um i feel like this is the opening that's probably leading to a lot of secrets and, and what a lot of uh, co-op friends of you will love is that you can actually play uh, couch co-op so you know uh if you have a Big TV, your, your your screen basically splits into two, and one takes over Batgirl, the other one takes over Robin, for example, and then Batgirl, for example, can go uh, go in hard. You know, she can punch, punch. She can throw kicks. She can use um, kind of more like uh, QC combat, so to speak, right? While Robin can slowly work his way to Mister Freeze, for example, or. Robin can teleport somewhere, and then he can use his, his energy whip to just tangle down enemies. That's also an inter interesting point, right? Like, sort of, Batgirl can can use her crowd control mechanism with the, with the bats, and maybe even lurk enemies into the direction of Robin, and he can almost, like, more stealthily grab them. Very interesting here is that uh, creative director Patrick Redding has told us a couple couple more hints about the gameplay system, which is that uh, Gotham Knights works with a level system in which opponents also level. 
regardless of whether you attack Mr. Freeze at level 5 or work your way up to level 15, it is always a challenge, according to him. The level not only determines the level of difficulty, but also the weapons and special skills that bosses use. What is immediately noticeable and uh, a little bit annoying, I would say, is that if we deduct damage from Mr. Freeze, it shows up in the popping red numbers. It's a bit more like, like Assassin's Creed Odyssey or Origins. Some people like it. I personally think it's kind of like a downer because it sort of interferes with your atmosphere. I would personally say oh, that's that's sort of not everyone's cup of tea, but some people like it. What do you think about it? You know, it's a Batman game without Batman. I would say that's a very risky move. Uh, certainly something I didn't expect, if I'm honest. I mean, I thought they would just do another Batman game because Batman obviously <laughs> works and is a really cool character. But I also don't mind exploring Batgirl and Robin. I mean, Robin for example, is, I think, a very interesting character. Obviously, Dapple is a super interesting character ready to explore. There's Nightwing. I guess people also care about him, so... You know, I mean, all of these characters have a lot of backstory in the comics. They haven't really been explored too much in the in the, in the games and in the movies, actually, as well. Like I said, right? Like, uh, Robin, for example, has been quite, uh, quite a force and quite important for the older movies. Like, I think Tim Burton, for example, did. Uh, but he has not been... Yeah, he, he pretty much had no presence in the in the latest movies. So, especially everyone that just knows or mainly knows the Crystal Nolan movies, uh, The Dark Knight, The Dark Knight Rises, or now the new one uh, with Robert Pattinson, they don't really know a lot about Robin. So, it's going to be interesting. I think it's, a, it's an interesting direction they are building. Especially... It will be interesting if they really integrated Justice League uh, more heavily into, into this because Batman and Justice League, that's certainly a blend we haven't seen in the game. And I mean, that obviously would offer a ton of op opportunities for them to sort of like widen this whole universe. I hope you like that, right? Like, let us know in the comments below what you like, uh, what you want us to change, any game you want us to talk about. We just checked out uh, Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. This is obviously going to be a huge one. And uh, yeah, if you want, just check out fitme.de. You can just uh, sign up for a newsletter. Yeah, I mean, follow us on Twitter. Uh, also, first international play money exchange. We'll have a ton of more content there, a ton of more Gamescom updates. Everything we play, everything we see. Stay tuned, uh, stay healthy, keep on gaming, stay ready. We will launch Fit Me in October, so this is going to be a really, really cool ride. See you. Bye.